We talked to more than 30 people, vendors, users, other leading edge thinkers about big data, and crystallized some, some key technology dimensions that we're going to talk about. Some of these are even tensions between two choices, uh, which direction you want to go in. So the first one would be one box or going parallel. We've talked a lot about parallel being the real option for big data. But for many, if their data isn't that big, there are single box options. What they really need to think about is are there technologies that might work, for instance, column databases or putting more engineering into their uh, single database uh, that can make that work for the size data they have. And thinking about Moore's Law and that machines get bigger. Um, the next thing is the style you're going to use. We've mentioned MapReduce a few times, relational databases and SQL are the other options. And what we found is that there, it depends on your organization, your skill sets, kind of willingness to learn, how much infrastructure you have. So SQL is something that a lot of people know. There's a lot of infrastructure to support it. You probably have people who, who do know it and understand it. And that might be, in some ways, an easy choice. Uh, with MapReduce, there is some learning, but from everything we hear and know, it's a pretty quick learning curve. Uh, it requires a little bit more programming uh, than, than maybe SQL does, uh, but there are things happening that are making MapReduce easier to work with. What we found, though, is that people using MapReduce can be very engaged with the data. We don't know whether that's just because they're early adopters and are excited about using it, or if there's something inherent in, in MapReduce that just gets people more involved with uh, the data. They also really can be complements. Uh, MapReduce is great for experimenting and trying out data that you're not really sure how it's uh, going to be organized, which brings up to organization of data, which is an important piece of the puzzle. One of the reasons people are using some of the alternative technologies is because they don't really know how they're going to use the data. Depending on your familiarity with the data you might want to be analyzing, in some cases a predefined schema where you know how you're going to use the data makes sense. In other cases where you're not really sure how you're going to use it, not defining the schema ends up being a great benefit. The type of data structure that allows uh, you not to have to predefine your data includes these key value pairs which are common with MapReduce and other simple databases. What these allow you to do is just kind of throw the data in, analyze it. When you figure out a repeatable pattern, then you can turn it into another data structure for repeated analysis. That decision can be very important for kind of new efforts or experimenting with data. We talked about having multiple machines and when you start getting into parallelism, you start getting into needing to think about resiliency and failure handling. A lot of databases are designed around the notion that you're not going to have your hardware fail very often and that there's a recovery process. As you add more nodes to or more servers to the system you're using, you now are guaranteeing you're going to have failures, and maybe on a common basis. Then there's other uh, kind of infrastructures that accommodate those failures readily. Now, something like Hadoop and MapReduce allows that to, uh, handles failures very well, and some of the databases handle that as well. So, in thinking about your platform, you might want to be thinking about how many nodes you might be using and how important failure is to what's going on. On hardware. The two kind of main choices are whether you get an appliance which has the software and hardware uh, pre-configured for you or whether you try to configure yourself. And a lot of that relies on what kind of resources you have, how quickly you want to get going. The appliances, some have proprietary hardware and some use more off-the-shelf hardware, but know the configurations and have done some testing on what works. Some of that depends on how much parallelism you're going to use. If you're trying to keep the number of nodes constrained for cost reasons, the appliance approach might be a good one because the, uh, there's testing and tuning done by the vendors. If you're really going to be going to a large number of vendors, it just might not matter as much because if there's a performance problem, you can just add more, more nodes to the platform you're working on.